The gentlelady from the District of Columbia, Ms. Norton, is now recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair, and let me thank you for giving us the opportunity to indicate uh, what the recovery, the American uh, Rescue Plan has done in, in, in the kind of detail we're doing here today. The CARES Act was one of the starkest examples uh, in recent years of why Congress should grant statehood for the District of Columbia. The Republican-led Senate intentionally treated DC as a territory instead of a state for fiscal re relief in the CARES Act, depriving the district of 755 million during the most critical time of the pandemic. Republicans did so even though the district residents not only pay the same federal taxes, but the highest per capita in the United States in more than 27 states. So we are grateful that the recovery funds in the American Rescue Plan retroactively provided that $755 million to the district and treated DC as a state, county, and city to reflect the reality that DC provides services to each of these levels. And I thank the chair woman for her support for these provisions. The District of Columbia is allocating, uh, and I think that this question is for Dr. Leachman, uh, is allocating $900 million of its recovery fund al uh, allocation allotment for services for disproportionately impacted communities. That is more than we're investing in any other expenditure category. Uh, Dr. Leachman, based on the data we have available, is the District of Columbia unique in prioritizing this expenditure category above others? Uh, and should other, other states and localities follow what the district is doing? Excuse me, Representative Norton, could you uh, please uh, repeat the, the area in which uh, the district is focusing its, I didn't quite hear. It's, it's uh, services for disproportionately impacted oh. communities. Thank you. You know, this is, uh, this is a very important response. Uh, the impact of the pandemic has been very unequal uh, by race, by gender, and by community. And so directing resources in ways that, uh, that help those communities particularly is, is a really central part of what the response needs to be. Um, we, we are seeing communities and states around the country uh, uh, focusing attention in that way, and the Treasury Department's guidance really encourages it. Um, you know, I could give you a, a couple of good examples. In, in, uh, in California, for instance, uh, they're revamping their youth mental health system using uh, fiscal recovery funds in ways that will have, uh, will have uh, equitable impacts, will improve particularly the mental health services that are received uh, by uh, youth of color uh, and, uh, and, uh, and low-income low youth. Uh, in, uh, in Maryland, the fiscal recovery funds are going to, uh, to invest in, a, a, in, educa in education uh, investments that will uh, particularly benefit uh, uh, communities that have historically been disinvested uh, in the education system. So I really appreciate the district uh, focusing its, its, uh, its funds in that way. I think it's right in line with what Treasury is encouraging and in line with what will help build a strong recovery. Governor Pritzker, uh, you've been a leader in investing recovery funds to support disadvantaged communities, which is my focus in these questions. Can you review some of the highlights of these investments? Uh, and do you believe they have created uh, a more resilient future in your state? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, let me begin by saying that, as you know, coronavirus had its most devastating effects on the most disadvantaged communities, communities that have been uh, disinvested from for, for many, many years. 
Uh, and so we focused many of our resources precisely on those communities, not just in the uh, vaccination and other healthcare recovery efforts, but also in the economic recovery efforts. So for example, within our back to business program and the prior small business program in 2020 from the CARES Act dollars, uh, we focused on making sure that uh, businesses that were owned by uh, uh, people in those disadvantaged communities were, made, were getting a large piece of the pie. Um, remember that PPP didn't cover everybody. And in fact, many people, black and brown people, people of color across the state of Illinois couldn't access PPP. They didn't have the right resources uh, or navigators. We created community navigators to help those small businesses access funds, not just at PPP, but, but very importantly, our state funds that came through the dollars that were provided by the federal government. So those are just examples of things that we were doing and, and continue to do to this day uh, because the, the recovery hasn't uh, completed. I mean, we, we have much more work to do to lift up communities that have been disadvantaged and affected by COVID-19 more than others. The gentleman's time has expired. Uh, so I now recognize the gentle lady from North 